at heart and you want to come and dance at the front, uh, there's some toys, some inflatables, some <laughs> scarves. Come and join us. Come and have a party and join us as we worship together this morning.
Amazing. Thank you, guys. We have joy in our hearts this morning, and it's wonderful to be singing about it. Um, well, now our children are going to head out to their groups. They're going to head out to the back um, to find those who are wearing a green lanyard. If you're a guest and you would like to join us for one of our groups, please do head to the back, and you'll be made very welcome. And that's for all children. And, what, and for those of us staying in here, why don't we turn and chat to our neighbours and ask them what they've been up to this weekend. Can I interrupt those conversations and encourage you to, to continue them later on? We have tea and coffee after the service, and we'd love to encourage those conversations to continue afterwards. And just to flag a few notices for you, um, if you don't get our weekly notices and you would like to receive them, please let us know. Do sign up for our emails, and you'll find out all that's going on in the life of our church. Or you can grab one of these sheets at the back of the service today. Uh, just a few things to flag for you is our seven services are starting again next week. Um, Sunday evenings at seven on the second and fourth Sundays of the month. Um, and we, this term we're gonna be looking at the spiritual gifts. So please do join us next Sunday night for that at seven. Um, the other thing to flag coming up in September is our beach trip um, next Saturday the 14th of September, um, they are, a group is heading to Walton on the Nays and they will be meeting there at 11 a.m. And all ages, stages of life are welcome to join us for that. And hopefully it will be as sunny as that next Saturday. Um, the other bits to then put in Saturday week, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Saturday week. For me, this Saturday is this Saturday, next Saturday. Anyway, anyway. We could be here all day, we could be here all day. For anyway. Later on in September, um, we have Alpha, and uh, Alpha is a wonderful place to be asking the big questions of life. Um, is there more to life than this? Who is Jesus? Why did he die? Why am I here on this earth? And so if you've ever been asking those questions, or you have some friends who've been asking those questions, or you have some friends who think might be interested in asking those questions, why not bring them along to Alpha? And we're running two courses this September, uh, one in the daytime from 10.30 to 12, where there'll be tea and coffee and plenty of cake. Um, and then in the evening, uh, 7.45 to 9.30, and that will be including dinner. So if you're interested, please do come speak to me or sign up via the website. The last bit to then put in your diaries, and I encourage you to take out your phone, take out your paper diary, whatever you use, whatever your preference is, and that is for Saturday the 5th of October. It's our church home and away day. Closer each day. Uh, we'll work on that, we'll work on that, guys. Work on it. Thank you, Martin, though. Um, guys, we are having our church home, not away day, on Saturday the 5th of October. Um, on the Friday night, we'll gather for some worship in the evening, 
and then on the Saturday we'll be here all day, 9 until about 3.34, there'll be teaching, there'll be activities, there'll be food, there'll be fun, it's going to be a great day and stuff, provision for children and youth as well, so please do think about signing up for that, keep a date in your diary and we'd love for you to join us for that. But that's all the notices and please do check out uh, the notice sheet um, to see if anything else that's going on in the life of our church. But we're now going to return in a time of prayer and invite Katie to lead us now. Father, we praise you for this day that you have made and the special time of celebration for Arabella and her family, Nikki, Daniel and Amelia. We thank you that you have blessed the family with Arabella and we pray for your guidance and provision in her life and that she will come to know and trust in you. Jesus, you said, let the little children come to me. Thank you for the people in our church, schools and families who share your truth and love. Would you bless and protect them, especially at this time of a new term? We praise you for the blessing that the summer events were to families in our area, and we pray you continue to meet with them over the term ahead. Father, we pray for all in education who are starting back at school, as pupils and as teachers. We pray that good relationships will be formed between staff and children. May all children know that they have a place of acceptance and safety in our schools and be able to learn and thrive there. Be with any children or parents who are worried at this time. Grant them your peace and comfort. I pray for good night's sleeps and smooth starts to the first mornings back. Pray for new staff starting in schools and especially for the new head teacher at Christ Church. Lord, draw near to him at this time. Give him and the governing body wisdom and guidance in all the decisions that are made at the school. Lord, you tell us to share our worries with you because you care for us. You know every detail of our lives. You perceive our thoughts from afar. You know and care about any work, family or health concerns that we are facing this week. Let's take time now to hand over any worries, concerns or praises to God that we have about the week ahead. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you. Do not be worried and do not be afraid. Lord, I just pray that we can trust in your promises for our lives, especially for this week ahead. We pray for our country, for wisdom in decisions made in government about our lands, education, care system and finances. Lord, let your peace reign in this country. Your kingdom come and your will be done. And as we think about our wider world, we cry out to you for those situations of conflict and of famine, of earthquakes. Lord, we just don't know what to say and we don't know what the answers are. We know there's so much hatred in this world and we pray for your peace. God, you are gracious, compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Will you act out of compassion and love and show your justice and mercy in our world? We thank you for places where your salt and light is evident in people who are working for good in their lands. Strengthen them and multiply the fruits of their labour in the same way that you multiplied the little the disciples had to give so that it could feed all those in need. Let's just take some time now to pray for situations in the world that are on your heart, <coughs> things that you might have read in the news. Lord, we name Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. We name all the aftermath of the riots. We name any places where we know that there's been destruction through impacts on our earth, through our own man-made issues and global warming and flooding. Lord, we pray for those places. We pray for your peace and your healing in our land. And let's finish together with the words of the Lord's Prayer, how Jesus taught us to pray. It shall come up on our screens. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom together in a time of worship. Just feel free to worship in work where you feel comfortable.
One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek and worship him in his temple. Lord God, we thank you that we can turn our eyes to you, that we can turn our eyes and worship you and glorify you. And Lord God, that we find you in this temple, but in all the temples around the world, we find Jesus and his hope. So Lord God, will you come and bless us? Come and fill us with your hope, fill us with your presence. And Lord God, encourage us that we might go out and worship you, that our longing would be to seek your face and to worship at your feet all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do take a seat and uh, we're coming to the start of a new term um, and we are going to be starting a new series in the Gospel of Luke um, and looking at understanding Jesus. And Richard's going to come preach to us in a few moments, but Esther's going to come and give us our reading first. The reading is from Luke 3, verses 1 to 18. John the Baptist prepares the way. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He 
He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. <laughs> As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is ready at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowds asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you're required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, God ex John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Thank you, Esther. Great job with all those tricky names earlier on. Well, a very good morning to you. It's lovely to see you, whether you're in the church building here or joining us online. And again, a special welcome to all our friends and family here for Arabella this morning. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to go to the theatre and to see a show called A Chorus Line. I expect some of you know it. It's a show about 17 dancers auditioning for a place in a chorus line in a new show. And the entire show is really taken up with the backstory of these dancers. What's happened in their life so far? What's brought them to this point? What's the background that's made them dance and audition for this show? And if that all sounds a bit dull, let me assure you it made for a, a gripping show uh, with lots of good song and dance routines in between. But today, as we start our autumn term, we're going to be looking at another person's background. What's their backstory? This is an even more dramatic background, but unfortunately, no song and dance numbers for me today. <laughs> It is the background of the most important person you could ever hope to meet, understand, and have a relationship with. A person who offers hope, forgiveness, new life, and the promise of eternity. I don't think you need a spoiler alert from me to tell you that person is Jesus. Now we can start with the background of Jesus, right back from the earliest chapters of the Bible where there starts to be prophecies of a Messiah. We could start with the stories of, of Jesus' birth that we had read at Christmas. But we're going to pick it up just before Jesus' public ministry, just before he goes public and starts all his amazing works. And all through the term we're going to be then following Jesus through the Gospel of Luke. So what about Luke? Luke tells us at the very beginning of his book about Jesus some things about why he's written it. And he says he's carefully researched everything. He speaks of eyewitnesses. And he says he's written an orderly account so that we can all be sure of the trustworthiness of the facts that he's telling us about Jesus. And we see that coming out at the start of that reading. All those names of the rulers and uh, Roman officials which can easily date this to around AD 28 and a specific location. 
Luke wants us to know that this is real stuff that really happened at a real time and place. Then verse 2. Into this context, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah. And this is the John we commonly know as John the Baptist. How appropriate for today's baptism service is that? And John has a role that was foreseen by the great prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament, and that's quoted in the next words, verses 4 to 6, a voice crying out, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Valleys shall be filled up, mountains and hills made low, crooked roads made straight, and rough ones smooth. And all people, all peoples, will see God's salvation. It's a picture of a major highway being built to herald and greet and prepare for the arrival of someone really important. Back in those days, it would have been for a, an emperor or for a conquering general returning. That is filled up, mountains made low. This is something really big. Um, it's like a million times bigger than our local wear potholes being filled in and the roads made smooth. So, of course, the person that this preparation for is Jesus. Preparing the people of that time for the public ministry of Jesus. Preparing them to recognise him. Preparing them to receive him. And the way John carried out that mission is described in verse 3. He preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He was baptising people who repented, who turned from the wrong things they'd done by washing or immersion in the river Jordan as a sign of forgiveness for their repentance. A symbolic washing showing God's generous forgiveness for those who repented, turned and wanted to follow him. A new start in God's gracious plan. And the passage continues, though, with I think, what we think of as pretty harsh words from John. But these words actually highlight two key wrong paths, false paths, from true faith and a living faith. And first John comes straight out with it, you brood of vipers, he says, you brood of vipers. He says, he points out the hypocrisy the hypocrisy of those who profess repentance and trusted in baptism without any change of life at all. And it's a warning of the first false path, that of trusting outward rituals rather than a living faith. Trusting in baptism and church attendance isn't enough for a living faith. And secondly, he says to some of them uh, who think that they're all right by nature of their birth, he says, the patriarch Abraham, who say the patriarch Abraham is our father. He says, God can make children of Abraham out of the stones on the ground. The false path he's highlighting is thinking that you have faith, that you're okay with God just because of your parents' faith or the faith of the culture that you were brought up in, your country's religion. True repentance and the path of faith requires more than that. It requires an individual's own personal response of faith. And what does he say to both these groups of people? That comes next, verses 11 to 14. He says, to show that your repentance, your faith is real, show it in your real life, real world actions. That's what demonstrates it's true. To show that this ritual of baptism is actually genuine. Show that there's sincere change of heart. Verse 11, he says, be generous with those in need. Verse 12, act justly in your dealings. Verse 14, don't exploit people when you're in a position to do so. Show your genuine by your real world actions. Now, the people of Israel, they hadn't seen this kind of prophetic word, these prophetic actions of moving like this. They hadn't seen this for hundreds of years. And so people start to wonder, verse 15, could this guy here be the long-expected Messiah, the Messiah they've been waiting for? Could this guy be it, John? And John makes it very clear 
that it's not him. That's not who he is. He says, I baptise with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John always points forward. He points forward to the one to come, to the Messiah, to Jesus. He will be so much greater, he says. In comparison, John says, I wouldn't be worthy to even do the most basic servant's task of undoing his sandals. He will baptise not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit from heaven and with his fire. The Holy Spirit. That's God's living presence and power and love in human lives. Changing, making holy and pure. The image there of purifying fire too. When the Holy Spirit first came on the apostles, they <laughs> saw tongues of fire from heaven coming down to receive for each person. Not just an immersion in water, but drenching with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Fire up in the sky. And John continues with another sentence that perhaps makes us a bit uncomfortable today. It says, of this person coming, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and gather, <laughs> gather the wheat into his barn, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What's that all about? Well, the image is from farming. You'll know if you've been uh, through the fields around where in the past few weeks or driven through the countryside lately. There are all those golden fields of wheat and cereal. They've all been cut down, probably by some great combine harvester that separated the good grain that we want to eat into one category and has left behind those bales that you still see in the field with the much less valuable straw baled up. It's similar to that. In those days, they gathered the wheat in on a threshing floor and they threshed it out with a winnowing fork and all the good grain was put to one side and the chaff, the worthless stuff that was left, was blown away or burnt. It's a picture of judgment. Forgiveness, cleansing, a new start is always on offer to everybody. But at the same time, they needed to recognise that particularly in the world that they were living in, with the injustices of local tyrant kings, oppressed as a people by the merciless, merciless occupying Roman Empire, it's important to know that God's justice will prevail in the end. And then the final words of our reading, uh, John exhorts the people and preaches the good news to them. He exhorted them, in other words, he encouraged them, he urged them to repentance, to receive baptism. He urged them to live just and generous lives, lives that reflected a sincere faith. He preached the good news to them, that God is clearly at work again, that change is possible, and most of all, the promised, long-expected Messiah is just coming to them. He's just about to appear. He's just around the corner now. And that's the background. That's the context in which Jesus starts his public ministry. Come back next week as we start his public ministry. But for us here today, what are we going to take this passage from this, this passage away with us today? And the first thing is this. John reminds us that a living faith isn't evidenced by the outward rituals that we go through, but it's shown to be real by the way that we live our lives out in our everyday circumstances. John's words to the inquirers then, be generous to those in need, act justly, be fair when you have power to over others. They're just as relevant to us as they were to those folks back then. Be generous, treat people fairly and justly. Whether that be at work, whether we're out shopping, at leisure, with family. Be fair, be generous to those in need. And the second thing, the thing supremely about John the Baptist, really, is John points to Jesus. 
He always points forward to Jesus. And for us, whatever else we might be caught up in, whatever other ways that we might serve the Lord, it's important to remember it's not so much about us. It's all about Jesus. John is an example to us of how and why we point to Jesus. Because why else are we sat here this morning if not because of Jesus? Because of who Jesus is, because of what Jesus has done, because we want to honour him and through him honour God the Father. The Jesus who comes and says to all people, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. The Jesus who died on the cross for the forgiveness of all who come to him. Jesus, whose mighty resurrection from the dead shows his victory over sin and wrong and promises eternal life. Jesus, who offers us a new start. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Jesus, who ascended into heaven and poured out his Holy Spirit, offering us new life now. Jesus, who now from on high still lives bearing our humanity, understanding our weaknesses and interceding for us. Jesus, who one day will return in glory. Jesus, the amazing Jesus. John reminds us it's not so much about me, it's all about Jesus. It's him we gladly point to. It's him we celebrate. He is the reason why we're here for the baptism of Arabella this morning. You know what? If you're uncertain about all this stuff to do with Jesus, can I encourage you to continue to journey with us through Luke's Gospel this term? To discover more of why Jesus is so important as we encounter him and meet with him. You can join us in person or online as we continue to explore who Jesus is. Or perhaps you'd like to explore that more interactively, have much more chance to ask your own questions. We've got two Alpha courses running this term, a great opportunity to explore more and ask your own questions. And then for all of us, for all of us who have been following Jesus, whether we've been following Jesus for many, many years or just a short while, as we continue to journey with Jesus, through Luke's Gospel this term. Let's pray that all of us would have fresh glimpses, fresh encounters with Jesus, with this Jesus, our Saviour, Lord, Friend and King. I'm going to invite you to stand now, please. I'm going to say a short prayer and then we're going to continue to join in worship. So if you'd like to bow your heads or any way you'd just like to stand and reflect in God's presence, we remember that we stand in the presence of this risen Lord Jesus this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for John the Baptist, for the way he fiercely pointed to Jesus, for the way he gave his life for that in the end. Thank you, Jesus, that you're present now by your Holy Spirit. And I just invite you now, in the few moments' silence, wherever you are, to consider your own response to this Jesus. Perhaps to how you would go out to live for him today with generosity in your heart. Or to explore more of who he is. Or just to know that you want to encounter him more this day and this term. Lord Jesus, thank you for all of who you are, for all of you, what you have done, and for living, Lord, all that you continue to be to us. Thank you that you hear the prayers of everyone this morning, and we lift them to you now, in Jesus' name. Amen.
continue in worship. And thank you for sending John the Baptist to lead us and to guide us and point everyone to Jesus. Lord God, will you help us to know him, to share him, and rejoice in him today and every day. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. And we come to Arabella's baptism this morning. And Arabella, thank you for bringing all your friends and family to church this morning. Um, and why don't you bring your... Thank you so much for joining with us here this morning. And if you'd like to find out more about our ministries, please do go to our website, www.christchurchware.co.uk or do check out our social media. And so let's spend a few moments just continuing to receive the Lord's blessing as we open our hands as a sign of openness. And so may you know God's peace May you know his strength, may you know his love, his hope, his joy as you journey through into this week. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you and all whom you love. And may it flow from you wherever you are this week. Amen. Mm -hmm.